and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading today is from Genesis chapter 25, verses 19 to 34. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padam Aram, sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife, because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle. So they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skilled hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, first, Sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Here, what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Blessed is God. Today's response is from Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. Said responsibly, Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. 
The second reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Soil, 
and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of God and does not understand it, the evil comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I tell you these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It was an adventure for me to begin fourth grade. We had a neighborhood school that went from kindergarten through third grade, one class of each. It was close by, about six, eight blocks away. Everyone knew everyone. It was a safe walk to school. But at fourth grade, you had to go to the big elementary school on the other side of town. It was about a mile to the school. And I would walk down the hill from my home and into the woods. And there in the woods, I found the turkey path. It was a path that was used by adults and young people, those on their way to school, those on their way to work down in the small town that existed at the bottom of the hill. I walked that many times up and down. At the beginning, it was deep, dark woods. It was near railroad tracks. There was an old reservoir that held water for the steam engines for that day. I saw it a few years back. It wasn't that dark and deep as I remembered. It was only about a third of a mile long. But the path was still there. It was worn down. It was wide. It was compacted. Nothing could grow on it because of the people that were walking on it. And the seeds that fell on that path from the surrounding vegetation could not grow. They could not enter the soil. And I think about those seeds on the path and that soil that is worn down and hard and I think about my soul sometimes being worn down and hard, especially in the season that we have been in for the past months. There's compassion fatigue, there is the care of everyday life, there's the material that we put in our brains. Sometimes there is deadening reading, mindless TV, motion pictures, a lack of attentiveness to the things of the spirit, a lack of use. And that presses the path of the soul, the soil of the soul down harder and harder. If that weren't enough, the past four months have brought cares with it. Solitude that tramples our souls when it becomes too much. Sorrow that can't be shared with family and friends and community in the usual ways. There are people that uplift us. There is singing. But when will that ever happen again? 
I thought it would be easier preaching on Sundays than having to look into a lens and imagine those of you watching this on the television. But on Sundays I look out at faces covered with masks and I don't recognize them easily. I can't tell if they're smiling or frowning. I can't tell if they laugh. Everything is muffled. On top of that, then the sorest wounds of our country are laid bare. The economic and racial disparities in virus contagion and recovery can be seen plainly. Our racial and economic inequities are highly blighted. In ceremonies before soccer games throughout the world. There's financial uncertainty for so many. There are people in this country that are hungry. Are we open? Are we closed? Everything becomes a political statement. It all becomes too much and it downtroddens the paths of our heart. And it becomes harder, at least for me, to allow the Spirit of God to enter in, to allow the Word to enter in. The path of and to our hearts grows hard. It protects us, yes, but it doesn't allow things that need to be in our hearts to get there. I love that hymn that we've sung, I the Lord of sea and sky, and there's that verse that says, I will break your hearts of stone, give you hearts for love alone. It comes from the book of Ezekiel. I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. To break the heart of stone, to break the soil. Spirituality is not a luxury. It puts things in perspective. It connects us to what is important. It keeps us alive. Often the mindless search for excitement leads to the inability to be quiet and to stop. And the path becomes hard. Nothing sinister, nothing malicious, nothing evil, just use. Long use hard use, and it happens gradually and over time. It is an interesting thing when you see things skip a generation. My father loved his garden. He counted the potatoes and onions and went for six years without buying either one. His asparagus grew, the tomatoes grew, the eggplant, all of it grew carefully tended. In the spring, he would go out with his rototiller and he would break the ground, leaving it available for the seeds that are placed. My son is a gardener. He goes out to the field and I've gone with him. And he works, he works in the garden and things begin to grow. But first, the soil has to be broken. When it gets compacted and allows nothing in, it needs to be broken open. And whenever I read this parable, I think about those gardens that need the soil broken and opened to allow things to grow, and of our hearts that need to be opened to all that is around us. There are tillers in our life. There is worship, even when you don't feel like it even when it's seen through the TV or computer screen. There is service when you don't feel like it. There are the scriptures, there are the stories of those who trusted God. There is prayer, again, even when you don't feel like it. There's an awareness searching for the presence of God. There is the asking, where is God? Where is God speaking to me? Where can I find God in my daily life, in the people that I meet, in the customers that I serve, in the children I love and live with, 
in friends. To look for God is to cultivate the soil of the soul. Cultivation makes a place where the seed can take root, where the spirit can make a place in us. It's a strange thing also because you can help till the ground for others when their hearts grow hard. A friend of mine, Cynthia, told a story about her neighborhood, about a group of surly teenagers who gathered at the corner to wait for the bus. And there was an older woman who walked out and walked down the sidewalk every morning. The group wouldn't part. She had to walk around. They would stand in her way. They blocked the sidewalk. They were loud. They dressed strangely. And weeks went by. And as the weeks went by, she greeted them every morning. They parted for her. They began to talk back to her and greet her in return. One day the students noticed that she wasn't coming. And it went one day and then it was two days and then they went and knocked on the door. There was no answer, they called the police and they found her inside her home with a broken hip. There had been an opening of the soil in her heart and she had helped open the soil in the hearts of that group that was on the corner and open their hearts to see people around them. Compassion, listening, acts of kindness, prayer, all of it lead to the cultivation and opening of our souls. We understand it about our gardens. Jesus here is saying that we need to understand it about our souls. We believe in the Holy Spirit, in the power of God, and the power of the Gospel, and as St. Paul said in today's lesson, that the Spirit of Christ that raised him from the dead dwells in us, working, cultivating, allowing that Spirit to take hold and to grow and produce fruit. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. 
We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Daniel, our own bishop. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church women. In the Diocese of Guatemala, we pray for Iglesia Episcopal San Miguel Acarantel, Campo de Maliscos, the Reverend Rene Rodriguez, Director. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea, the Most Reverend Alan Midgey, Archbishop. We pray for Donald, our President, and Tom, our Governor. We pray for those who are ill, especially Kay, Rita, Shirley, Lee, Dolores, Dick, Rick, Paul, Tom, Stan, Jill and Griffin. Remember Lunetta, Art, Anne, Celeste, Pam, Gerald, Sophie, Lori, Doug and Marilyn, David, Patricia, Alex, Claudia, Molly, Richard, Emily, Sally, John, Lori, and Gabby. We pray for all those whose care for our daily needs puts them at risk, for those in medical fields, for those in nursing homes, and for those who care for them, for those who do research and quest for a vaccine. And we remember all those whose lives have been affected by this illness. We remember those within our St. Martin's family who have died, and remember all those who have died of COVID-19. Gracious God, bless the growing covenant relationship between St. Martin's and Christ Church. Deepen the ties that bind us and open our hearts to what you yearn for us. Guide us in our search for a shared rector. Empower us in love as we grow our mission together so that we can move forward into a future that is exciting and full of hope, always depending on your grace. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and blessing. For you have created all things, and by your will they exist and have their being. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being 
sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves the living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Martin of Tours, and all your saints, from every tribe and language and people and nation, to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Because we cannot receive the bread and the wine together, the bishop has asked that we say this prayer. My Jesus, 
I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break. Understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.